Hello, can anyone hear me? Today we'll start this webinar. Uh, I would like to introduce Inge Sape. She will talk to us for an hour about active mobility. It's nice that you are all here. We will talk, she will talk for 30 minutes and we have two times 10 minutes discussion to talk about the options of active mobility within metamorphosis and without cities abroad. Uh, thanks a lot. I will now give the floor to Inika. Thank you, Nick. Hi, folks. Hi, students. How are you? You all have been kid. So that's perhaps a long time ago for you. But well, perhaps you might know how interesting, how important it is to have a child friendly environment. Can you remember that? Perhaps a long time ago for you. But well, it's really important because it's depending on development of kids, it's depending, depending on education, it's depending on what planners do. And that's why it's important that you students are involved. So welcome to you especially, welcome to the audience uh, abroad, welcome to other students from the Technical University Dresden, and welcome to the professionals of the Metamorphosis Project. So all welcome. So you see this, I'll wipe this out. Then we have a little bit more space to show what we want to show you, which is about this project uh, metamorphosis. Hedda told you more about it and the audience know and that's why I don't tell that much about it, only a bit of it. And I'd like to uh, give you more information about one of the parts, one of the uh, projects, tracks is about active mobility. And that's what I'd like to tell you a bit more about it. I'm one of the lecturers here at Buas, Breda University of Applied Sciences. And I hope to uh, well, give you a bit more information about child-friendly cities. That's it. If it runs, yes, no, no, that doesn't work like that. Doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. It just. So it's all about the main question. The main question for this project is how to get child-friendly city, child-friendly neighborhoods. That's very really important, as I told you before. It's important to have children in a good environment and you are the planners, you are the ones to design this environment and that's why you need to know the needs and the specialties and the development of kids that you can design for the future of this kind of child-friendly cities. So the goal for this EDU project, Metamorphosis, is that like developing and implementing uh, all this, the stuff uh, I said about together with children, not that we planners think what might be best for kids, but that we use the knowledge of the kids, the experience knowledge of these children, to put into this project. Main question also, also before that. And then you need a kind of a structure. And the structure in metamorphosis is that you have several levels. Like you have the neighborhood level, which is used to be important for this level of planning and designing child-friendly cities. But don't forget the street level, which is more down earth. And don't forget the district, the city level, and even more than that. Kind of a metaphor for child-friendly cities. And that's why it's important to have this uh, discussion with you about the contents of child-friendly uh, cities. And as you students all know about the HOS system, which tells us about Hydra, Orca, and its cover. Aha, uh -huh. question? Okay. Yeah, good. Software. <laughs> it's a software. You all uh, are good, very really good. So it's all about these levels in planning levels, and it's all about combining the infrastructure, which is hardware, and the organization which is working together with all kinds of communities and the children and the schools, for example, and the cities, and perhaps neighborhood uh, organizations, mm -hmm. and the software, which is more the branding, the campaigning, and the communication. That's, again, important to have child-friendly cities, implemented, planned, and realized, after all. So these are the levels. So, uh, which cities are involved in this project uh, of uh, the EU? It's the uh, UK, Southampton, it's Stilberg, the Dutch cities, Munich, of course, in, in Germany, the Swiss city, Zurich, in Italy, Graz, in Österreich, Austria, and in... Romania. Romania? Oh, Romania, even. Geography. 
uh, all by Julia. So these are the main cities involved in this EU project, metamorphosis, and they are the cities involved in planning this kind of uh, well, child, -friendly, child friendly cities. This is an, uh, a complex one. Uh, it looks like complex. Like EU projects are always organized in work packages. WP work packages. So we have several work packages in this EU project as well. Work packages one is the management. It's mainly organized by GRASS in this case. And they do the kind of process management, project management. They organize all kinds of things. So it's not mainly content, mainly organization processes. And then you have several layers of concepts. You have like user involvement and analysis. You have innovative concepts which is really important for uh, cities to, uh, to uh, well, stick to innovative uh, concepts, for example. It's about implementation trials, how, what could be done for implementing uh, things like uh, child-friendly cities. It's a work package like capacity building, which we are doing. This is a type of capacity building, so uh, spreading the knowledge and the information we have and share it, more or less. And we have work packages six, like monitoring evaluation, which is the Technical University of Bredesen on the screens, I hope. And we have, of course, communication and dissemination as a work package. So these work packages, that's, that's how an EU project works. So the how is important for us to uh, decide. And here you see the several uh, parts of the analysis, like children as radical questioners. We have implementation. How could kids be involved in this implementation. We have evaluation, of course, does it work or not? And the, the children should uh, assess the, the criteria, not we as planners. If they think it's good, then it's good. And not if we think it's good as grown-ups. So this is really important to have the, the kids as kind of judges. Empowerment, of course, how can we stimulate and facilitate those kids that they are involved? And of course, the transfer of knowledge, the, the kids as the disseminators. So that's one part of the how of this EU project. Then another thing of the how in this project is uh, we have several tracks in this project. It's not only the work packages, which is mainly process. This is a kind of the content. Who's involved in what content? And the content we are involved with as uh, University of Applied Sciences is the empowerment of active mobility. That's our specialism. So other ones are focusing on this one. Uh, this tracks, and we are focusing on this track, empowerment of active mobility. I'd like to tell you a bit more about that. And uh, can you go back? Because Nick drew these fabulous designs. Did you see that? So, like all the tracks are well, uh, visualized here. This is designed for active uh, mobility, and the other ones are, of course, linked to the other themes. But I think it's a great job to have this kind of visualization. So, Nick, great job. Thank you. Always, always, also important. So, and uh, what is unique in metamorphosis? The uniqueness is that it's depending on several tracks, of course, again. And uh, unique is that it's based, we, we're looking for evidence for more soft measures. And soft measures are really hard to find out the value of them, to find out the, the, the results, the efforts, and is it effective or not? And soft measures are always a bit more quantitative, not qualitative. And because of the quantitativeness, oh, that's a hard word, but it's a word, and it tells us it's that hard to have the uh, results and the efforts and the uh, effects of these soft measures. If you have a campaign, is it successful or not? That's really a question which is hard to survey. So for that reason, it's, we are looking for evidence-based soft measures. The second one is uh, to explore new ways of working and not working with us designers, planners, but working with kids and participating, letting kids participate in a process is a different task, you could say, a specialism. The third one is uh, we're looking for new monitoring and, and experimenting tools. And of course, kids are involved as well, again. And we're focusing it again, I, as I told, on the result of the soft measures. The fourth one is to have kids um, in their special role of activists, more or less. They have radical perspectives. They have different scopes, different fields. And for that reason, we think it's really important to have their scope and their perspective involved in this project. 
they have a different opinion. And it should be like that, that we planners listen to those kids and uh, have an eye open and an ear open for them. It enlightens this perspective. And um, number five is the mindset of the city shift. Uh, as now Tilburg, for example, because of this project, rethinks school zones. They rethink more in an opinion that kids are involved and kids are telling the city how it should deal with school zones, for example. This is more about the why. And now I'm telling you a bit more about active mobility. Here's the sign again, the nice picture of, uh, of Nick. It was, uh, as I told, track four. So I'm now focusing only on this track, the track of active mobility. And then why is it important to focus on kids and kids' perspective and being involved in uh, child-friendly cities? That has to do with uh, the major aim of this road act, which is empowering kids to become more independent users. That the freedom of touch, kids for example, is that they can go by bike or on foot because our system is relatively safe. Whereas for example, uh, cities in other countries are dealing with a lot of project, uh, pro problems concerning safety. Safety is a major issue of parents and cities not letting the kids go. On their own independently, and if we have if we provide cities with a more safe system, then parents could rethink uh, school environments or school routes and so on. So it has to do with independency and freedom. And when children get used to walking and cycling at an early age, then it's easier to keep them on the bikes or keep them going by foot. So if you start young as a youngster and you experience that it's safe and it's possible to go on your own, then you keep on cycling. And that's exactly why this is important to start young. We have an expression in Dutch, jong geleerd is oud gedaan, which is hard to translate, but it says something like, if you start young, you're used to it and you experience it and you keep on rolling like that. Okay? And that works, I think. Okay. Uh, the why. Why are we doing this? Because we have a population, this is the Netherlands, mainly this is uh, Europe, and in the Netherlands we have like 70 million people and more, about 9% of our population is this, uh, is this group of 4 to 12 years. So 9%, that's a, a high amount of people. So it's worth uh, concerning, uh, making concerns about them and worth uh, paying attention to them because it's 9% of the population. And they are, not, they are not having this big mouth as we grown-ups have. So they don't have a voice. And because they don't have a voice, we have to take care. And the why again, this, um, uh, this 1.6 million kids, 45% uh, is being active and 55% is not being active. So that's quite a problem in this area to uh, pay attention to. So the directive for kids is to exercise at least more of the intensive an hour a day. And they are not, and they are. So the other way around. They are not, they are, and they are not moving at that uh, space, uh, period of time. So for that reason, it's really important to, take, to pay attention to this freedom of movement, and they are able to move around in their cities. Because it lowers, as signed here, Depression symptoms, insulin, bone quality, being overweight, being independent and feeling your freedom. That's really important and risk of, uh, of safety and premature death, of course. And then we go to the figures uh, concerning, which is again the why of active and passive movements. This is active on the way to school, for example, and this is uh, passive. So more people are passive than active. And that's why exactly this uh, school, for example, school routes, can be fit in the daily projects, in the daily movements kids make. So every day again, if you are used to take the bike or go by foot, then it, it's kind of an exercise in an urban daily system, then you're used to it and you'll keep on going like that. So if we try to put this active and passiveness or turn this passiveness into activeness, then I think it's a good job and the daily start every day again, going to school, for example. And I told you, it's mainly about safety that parents decide to bring their kids to school. 
And can you imagine safety? Of course, all accidents happen, and there will be a question about it, how much uh, of that, uh, that kind of accident, accidents happen. So that makes that this discussion about parents is uh, still an important one, because the perception of parents is unsafety. And my sentence in, in this kind of meetings with parents is always, parents are not, they don't have a problem, they are the problem. Because they drive by car to the school, bring the kids to school, and they cause this problem. So for that reason, then you see this kind of uh, uh, vicious circle, then because people bring their kids to school by car, then it gets it's getting unsafer and unsafer, and for that reason, no, even more uh, parents bring, bring their kids to school. So for that reason, you have a kind of a circle. If you don't do anything, then well, it, goes, it goes wrong, and the system goes worse and worse and worse, and then all of, all of a sudden, 100% of kids are brought to school by car. So that's not what you'd like to well, emphasize, of course. You'd like to focus on more safety, and a system where kids can develop. Ah, time that you think. So I have some questions. We have uh, a few minutes now to discuss that. And one of the first questions is, um, what's the amount, could you pull that one, that they can read? Can yes, yeah. That's more practical, yes. Do we know, or do you know, how many fatal accidents do we have in the Netherlands in general per year? Is it like thousands? Is it like hundreds? Is it like ten? Who says more than two hundred? More than four hundred? More than six hundred? More than eight hundred? Oh, you're good informed. Well informed. It's like six hundred. 13, 620. And it used to be less a few years ago. And like 10, 20 years ago, it used to be much more. And like in the 70s, it was like 3,000. Can you imagine? 3,000 deadly injured people. Now we are on the level of 600 something, and it's too much. Every, every fatal, fatal uh, victim, of course, is too much. But so, well, we stick to the 600 and we think it's too much anyway. So we have like a policy on zero uh, safety, safety 100% zero victims. So how many victim uh, accidents is like the 630? And what did they, no, well, this is the amount. Okay, let's go to number two. Are there many, uh, are there more fatal casualties uh, in active or in passive modes? Who think active? It's more causing fatal accidents. The active modes. So the cycling, walking. What do you think? Who, did, who thinks the active is more? Nobody? The, the rest is taking uh, the, the passive modes? All of you? Okay. Let's show them the figures. Uh, the passive modes are less likely, to, if you cycle or bike to your work, for example, you're less likely to be hit by a car and have a fatal accident. But, like last year, there were more people dying on a bike than in active modes. Because active modes are a combination of the car, of uh, buses, of uh, the, the handicapped scooters. Uh, and then you end up in a higher mode. But 25% of the total amount of active modes, people who died, are people riding e-bikes. So this is like a new challenge that we are going to face with our new generations of cities that we really have to take care of how we're going to manage that in the future. And as you, as you, um, if you listen carefully, then Nick said really important stuff, which is uh, last year, 2018, it was the first year ever in the Netherlands where we had more deadly killed cyclists as cars or whatever. The first year, it never happened. We always were uh, that good in the balance in safety that we had less, even more cyclists in the amount of cyclists. Of course, we have, we have a model split which is quite high for cycling, which is, what is the model split for cycling again? We discussed it. 
I'll help you. Okay, like 26% of all modes are made by bike. So you can imagine that if half of the victims is deadly injured, then it's not that equal with the 25%, 26% of the rate of the amount of cyclists. That's not fair, is it? So it's not fair. And for that reason, it's really important that safety wasn't that issue in the Netherlands for the last 20 years. It was before, because of the amount of, of, uh, of victims anyway. And nowadays we are really concerned again because of the safety rates for cyclists and e-bikes are, yeah, well, getting sky highs. It's getting, getting sky high. So for that reason, it's really important to get to safety again, to get back to safety and rethink safety in the Netherlands. Okay, let's go back to the next question. Ha, this is a European one. What is the safest country in Europe for youngsters to travel? Any ideas? Denmark. Denmark. Good point. Luxembourg. Luxembourg? Yeah, well, they have, yeah, could be. Any guesses? Are you curious about it? Sweden. Sweden? Good guess. Let's show them. Show them. So here again, can you read this? Portugal. Okay, Portugal. Oh. On number one. Number two, Romania. Do we have an audience in Romania? We have. On the screen. Number two. Number three is the Netherlands. So not that bad. Huh? And then we have a few numbers less, and, and then again and again. And the last one, which is the next question, next question but I'll answer it, is Lithuania. They score, they rank lowest. So the Denmark and the Sweden and that kind of Scandinavian countries are doing well as well. But we're, doing, not, we're working hard in the Netherlands as the Scandinavian ones to have the zero uh, victim submission, uh, zero victim. Vision. Oh, that's a hard word. The funny so, thing is that yeah. also okay. our online audience all answered the question wrong. Like this is data from the World Bank and Portugal is the safest country. Nobody for thought kids. about that. I was quite surprised by this. And also to see that Lithuania is near the bottom, that was not a big surprise. But to see Romania high, a rank higher than the Netherlands, that was quite a surprise for me. So there's really a way to have a look at it. It's also how they manage transport. It's quite interesting to look more detailed into that situation over there. And figures, of course, always is hard to compare. So you find uh, any figures on what would you like to prove. So be always careful with the kind of figures you take and then the, the thing you want to prove. And uh, for example, the next, no, we have the next one. Yeah, it's small split for cycling. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, oh, yeah. Over there. Okay. <laughs> so let's go to the next question um, about uh, gender. Is uh, are more young females or young males uh, involved in accidents? Who think the females are? Because they're not that strict in cycling or moving a bit silly. Nobody? So only all of you think that the males are. Worst. <laughs> All of you? No. No. Okay. I'm not sexist, so I don't think either one is more than an accident. Okay, so You're, it's equal. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll have an equal, and the rest is males. Well, you're right. So it's the males. Um, <laughs> do we have to slide? <laughs> okay, and then. Uh, it's going to be the deaf yeah. me. So in yellow you see the females, even at the back side you can read this probably. So in yellow you see the females and in blue or dark one is the, the males. And in average, only in Lithuania, it's not half, half of even more females, but the rest is more or less, and Bulgaria is more, more or less, less females than males. Why? You can see. I think it's because men are, uh, yeah, they, they are more reckless. Men are more more reckless. Or they are more more uh, more likely to go over the speed. More guts. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say guts, but would be recklessness. Yeah. So they don't or, see the damage, yeah. or they don't see the risks, or. 
Yeah, they don't have that. Uh, yeah, they don't assess the risk of students. So, yeah. More careful. The females are more careful. Yeah. Hillary, you want to add something? Didn't you? Yeah, I think. Leave it. Okay, you agree. <laughs> okay, more reasons. Ah, I think it's a fair one. So it has to do with risk and perception and uh, that kind of all safety feelings and. Also, the group behavior, of course, is important. If you are in a group, you are having more, uh, you want to take more risks, for example. So that depends as well on the group. Let's go to the last one. The last, go to back. We have to go back then. The last questions. <laughs> it's a bonus about the model split of cycling to school. What about primary school? And the amount of kids going by bike to school in the Netherlands or uh, your country? <laughs> do you know? No idea. Any ideas? Do you, do you, do you have an idea about the, the modal split? You know the modal split, I told you about it. Tell me. Oh, I think in the city it's more areas, but I think in the rural areas it's more areas. And in the city, the cities, 42 50. 40 yeah, that's a good guess for rural or for city, cities, for cities, yeah, again, I'll come back to you. I would say cycling is in the city by class, about maybe 20% for primary children, in Germany, or in, yeah, I know, in, in, no, in, Holland. in Holland, I think that in the big cities, it's not more than 20% in the primary school. Uh, I, at least what I see on the street, I don't see that many. There's no one answer, of course, huh? It depends on the cities. And the bigger cities have more uh, multicultural schools and they walk more in general. Whereas, for example, the cities for average, like Breda, like 30% or 35% or even more are going by bike. And in, uh, for example, the secondary school people, what about that? A lot higher. A lot higher. Yeah. We don't have school buses. In Europe, they have the school bus system. We don't have that. So like, I did some research about uh, this kind of stuff. And it's like 93% of all kids, secondary school kids go by bike to school. So, and I guess if you go to the Germany or to France or to Lithuania or whatever, that is less. I think in the Netherlands we have the top position on cycling, 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 the amount of people, kids cycling to school. In secondary school, especially because we don't have the school buses, and primary school because we have the system of relatively safe systems uh, to go to school and school routes. So that's about a bonus. Some answers are given here. So the why, uh, I gave you one about the males and the females. This is the amount of it's a lot of facts, facts and figures. It's about uh, just to have an idea, like 127,000 Europeans are killed. Can you imagine? It's a whole city every year. So that's quite difficult. And this is the amount of people injured. It's a whole big city, city like perhaps uh, Rotterdam and Amsterdam together, and even uh, Utrecht or so, something like that. Or like the biggest cities in Germany, or well, it's a big city injured. And there's a lot of course, uh, several injuries among kids between uh, 0 and 14. And the good news is, they are not that sky high as the secondary school people, but well, the bad news of course is that every victim is a victim for much, too much. So the traffic accidents, we should reduce them because all those amount of figures tell us it's too much. Then to have an inside information, and as I told you, the good news is this is the ones under 15, only, but I guess I hope you, it won't be your kid, only 60%, 16 kids uh, are, killed in, are killed in traffic. Uh, by uh, on foot is like seven, and, and, and by bike is only four, but it's too much. Huh? If you compare this row, which is under 15, with this one, 
then, then you know why I said before, it's good to start with the youngsters, the young kids, to have them on the bikes, have them experience in the cities that they are equipped with skills to take care in, in, in city, uh, in urban traffic, and then they know how to behave. If they start to, to, to uh, uh, on, a, on a later age, then they have more problems. And this group, you can influence this group by uh, trying to educate this group. And therefore you need a system that is safe, and therefore you need child-friendly cities. And what's good for kids? It's good for everybody. So if, if we have child-friendly cities, then it's good for everybody. So let's go to the next one that says more about the how, the why, sorry. So this is one class, 32 kids in average. What happens in uh, one year, it is half of the class, like 60 young people between 4 and 12, are killed in traffic. It's half a class. And like 20 years ago, it was a whole class, like 40 kids, 30 kids. So we improved. But did we really improve? Or did we put our kids in cars to keep them more safe and make the safety for different people, for different kids, not going by cars, so this vicious circle. So that's the, the thought you might have. So half of this class is gone, more or less. And from this half, like 11 are killed by active modes. And only, what is it, four or five are killed by cars. So there is, uh, of course, a challenge of making this more safe. So active modes and to improve safety and to have these child-friendly cities is extremely important. Then, what can we do? You're the planners. What can we do? Any ideas? Can we do something? Should we give up? Give up? Who had a bi who had his bicycle exam? All Dutch, I guess. Huh? Do you know about the bicycle exam in uh, in Germany? Oh with Germany. Germany left. <laughs> what about the other ones? We have it in Lithuania. No, it was not me in Lithuania. It was tell me back. I did primary in Estonia. Es uh, yeah, Estonia. Who was it? Did you have a bicycle yeah. exam? You have. Okay. Who has a bicycle exam as well from abroad? Okay. Where are you from? Poland. Poland. They have bicycle exams. Okay. Very great to hear. Yeah. Croatia had bicycle exams. Great. So that's really important to have these bicycle exams and practice and theory on your bikes in the primary schools. Again, this is the good start. So what can we do, for example, that kind of education? Oh, what can we do more? What can we do more? It's not only about education. We have all kind of ideas, of course. Connecting to education, connecting to the hardware, pool, connecting to the over. I just told a book about this thing. No worries. Oh, there we are again. So, what to do uh, with this? We can do a lot of stuff with you as designers, which is really important. How to get this child friendly cities. Then we go back to this schedule where we could say try to put cycle friendly cities on all the levels. Of course, this is the main thing, the main focus is now here, but why not using the districts, more the city level, and even more like a, a kind of politics level to put uh, emphasis on child-friendly cities. And of course, it's not mainly about networks for, for kids or for uh, cycling or for walking. It's about cooperation, again, together with all kinds of partners like schools, like uh, provinces, like the national government, like the city governments, like uh, uh, all kind of neighborhoods organizations, and I could go and go on and go on. And of course, how to sell it. And that's the kind of things you talked about, like the bike exams, and like the little things you could do on schools to help kids go on in, and be safe in, in transport and traffic. So matter could be used as a 
framework on all the levels and all this uh, uh, wares, I could say, to improve. Now it doesn't work again, so please push. Uh, it's such a party. <laughs> Let me see. Um, so, well, we new share. The next one is we have now a few examples. And the examples show the examples which were uh, brought in by the cities involved in this project. So, we have examples from this operating cities in this uh, metamorphosis network that are brought in and give us an idea of what they are doing. So, the first one is yes, it works. The bicycle training. As one of you said, the, 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 the exam could be a thing, but also bicycle training. This is uh, Austria, around the city of Graz, and they do things like practicing with, with trainers uh, in real, uh, real situations, of course, with a certain age, you can't stop it to work, of course. Just put them out and uh, put them on a bike and say, hello, I'm your teacher and I'll bring you a life back. So that's not the goal you might think. You might think about target groups again. And this age nine till, till 10 is a really practical age to have this kind of uh, training. Which is, of course, these, these are the goals like encouraging, like enabling kids to, and, and develop skills is mainly the goal, of course. And it could, if you take this uh, schedule again, this, this graph, then it fits within the district and neighborhood level. So, good example. Let's go to the second one. Which is uh, in Zurich, in Switzerland, they have a, a thing called mobile bike repair point, where you can uh, think about, uh, it's a kind of uh, guerrilla, but then more regular, as we discussed this morning. It's about uh, enabling uh, kids to learn more about the me mechanics of the bicycle, how to repair a bicycle, and uh, to organize a practical training where you can learn that from, for example, uh, people really involved in this kind of business as professional. So the little mechanics that they could use for improving. Uh, it's, it's kind of a flexible point, a share point where it develops, a, it develops a kind of, it's a kind of route along several schools, for example. Main goals are, of course, well, to carry out minor repairs on their bikes themselves, that you learn that, and it leads to an encouragement, because if you have your bike, your bike broken down, you can re repair it yourself. It's not any more a reason not to cycle. And it fits within the district or lower level in schools, for example. It depends on how you organize this. Then we have the petty bus, which is a kind of a bus system, but not a bus, but a group of people, a group of young people, uh, the primary school age people, and they are uh, supervised by one or two kind of parents. And the parents uh, are kind of uh, chauffeurs, uh, drivers. And they drive more or less as a group the kids to school. You have a system where you have bus stops on the route to school, where you, as a group, for example, as a school, could combine this kind of uh, uh, routes. And it's made in uh, Italy, but also in the Netherlands and also in Germany. You see them at several points. So the measure is to design bus stops that are attractive for kids to, 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 to gather, to join. And it's, uh, of course, uh, a safe way to school because you're uh, accompanied by grown-ups and they help you and they learn you how to cross the street, for example. Uh, it is always accompanied by uh, an adult and it's a kind of a driver, as I told. And it's organized and paid by the city. Though, again, this kind of hardware and software measures are quite cheap in comparison to, for example, the hardware, the network. Uh, measures. Main goals are uh, safe walking, good maintenance and leads to more safety and of course uh, publicity for schools that they have a system that can help uh, parents uh, do that difficult job of raising kids. And it's fitting into a district again, it's mainly software, a bit of organization as well. And in Munich they have, the, in Germany they have uh, what they call a radl, radl, rally, rally of German. And it's, uh, the measure is to uh, have a kind of an interactive course for kids that they um, uh, try to uh, be physical and try to improve their skills by, of course, biking. And it's kind of well, special, as you see here. It's a, a kind of emphasis and a kind of challenge for these kids to improve this, the, the detailed skills. And by improving the detailed skills, it's uh, improving the total skills of, uh, of, behavior, of uh, riding on your bike. 
So they have all kind of puzzles and all kind of actions that are that can be imposed. Uh, I once did once uh, a kind of this uh, rally with um, how do you say something sweet that a pie a pie a pie so a twelve years old with a pie in their hands and they should like all kind of roots and uh, and 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 challenges take this kind of uh, challenges and then well uh, of course finish with a pie in their hand which is a challenge on 12 years old. And main goals are, of course, increasing the bike competences and make it fun. And it's a kind of, well, system fitting into the, sol uh, the software again. And of course, this is uh, the Netherlands, Stilberg. Uh, they have a kind of a school scan workshop where the kids are involved to rethink and to think together with the city. They buy the glass and walk under super supervision through, throughout the neighborhood. And the kids tell, the city officer was good or was not good. So they rate it with uh, red and, uh, and, and green thumbs. So they say this situation is good for me and this situation is bad for me. So then the city knows how to, what to improve and where to improve. Main goals are, uh, well, let kids of course actively think about their environment and invite them to rethink that and make the surrounding school better, safer of course, and more, more fun. Which is a district level software again. Southampton, for example, in the UK, they have something like Let's Ride Together, of course. It's a cycling event, a, a city tour, uh, like in this case, uh, six kilometers throughout uh, the city. And they close the roads off in, uh, so that it's really safe for kids. As you might know, as I told before, safety is the main reason why parents don't accept kids to go uh, by bike. And of course, some, the, all kinds of events happen uh, around this, uh, this route. Main goals are demonstrating how streets could look like without cars and look like being safe. And of course, encouraging uh, all kinds of, well, these little kids and the parents to use these roads and uh, be safe at, on the end and get on the bikes. Again, this is all fun. So empowerment, that, that means that uh, you could do all kinds of things. What could you do, like workshops and trainings? As I showed, like bike repairs, like bike walking and cycling classes, it's not only the, the walking class, you can do, can do the same thing on cycling, for example. You can empower the, the kids and improve and, and introduce their, uh, their parents, as I told, parents are the main problem, and as every school has parents. So every school in general do have problems, does have problems. And for that reason, it's really important to empower not only the kids, but also the school team and work together with parents as a partner in this, in this area. And of course, you can use all kinds of interactive apps and the new social media. About what mainly where Metamorphosis is focusing on is this di district and neighborhood level. And again, my message is don't look only on this level, look up to the city level and make it really meta, meta, super meta even. So you need politics on a national level, you need even the province to think about child-friendly cities, and you need uh, also at street level perhaps a few blocks or a few houses together, a little neighborhood part, work together on child-friendly cities. And it needs to be done on every level to have the effort, to have the results you would like to have. In fact, you'd like to have safe, attractive city that fits for all ages, even for the youngsters, four till 12, that they can go on their own independently, having all the freedom. That's why you'd like to have this child-friendly cities. An example uh, where I developed my, uh, this, this concept is called Kiprit, and it's mainly on a network level on the city, for example, where you could say, I connect all those destinations for kids like the schools and the libraries and like the playgrounds and like for example uh, a farm where kids could go to why not making kind of a highway but then a child-friendly highway which uh, where it's safe to uh, to cross the the streets and where it's nice to go to and that if you make that safe then you have a kind of highway for kids in your child-friendly city and that makes it really uh, child-friendly this kind of examples on city level to conclude more or less these are the examples that I know that are quite interesting and far in this kind of child-friendly uh, politics, which is the city of Amsterdam, Delft, the city of Ghent in Belgium, 
the city of Middelburg in the Netherlands and the city of Freiburg. There are more, but these are the ones you could go to and find more information. Again, a question to you. Do you know any examples? Do you know your city? Perhaps is that good at child friendly designs? I would also like to ask this question to our online audience mm -hmm. and I will reply to you in the comments. Yeah. So please ask me the question and I will ask it to Unica. Yeah. And this will be communicated either way. So do you have any do you have any examples? Right. Here we have an example or a question. I'm not entirely sure if it's one, but it does come to my mind thinking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, something I heard about a few years ago, some, uh, some cities have uh, what's called the uh, battle uh -huh. uh, in which so, uh, a few blocks are blocked off clear from cars, and all the kids are given, it's an event where are all uh, sorts of different kinds of uh, all sorts of different ways of playing outside are, are brought into the spotlight. Everyone gets to have fun. Uh, kids on the street often play. Uh, and given that it's uh, based on giving the kids freedom, give, empowering them, and letting them do what they want, I think, and since it also includes the exclusion of all the cars and other public transport. Unique yeah. playgrounds. And you turn the streets into playgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of the cars and for one day and then reorganize this. Oh. Okay. Do you think it's good? Uh, I think it's very often. I think that gets them outside, gets them exercising, and gets them used to that. Is it often enough? Only one day a year? No, but that's not the point. The point is to get the idea in their head uh -huh. and, and to empower them to make them feel more. In about. which heads? Uh, the kids. The kids, okay. And also any of the responsible adults who are in charge of making policy, who are in charge of mm -hmm. design fleets. So I think the last one is more important. Because it puts it on the map yeah. okay. I think I agree on that, that it's really important to have this kind of event. This is an event one day a year, and it happens in different countries. Uh, to, to go the, the television, television screens go on black um, that day, even. And they organize this, this kind of events with the cities and with all kind of young, youngster organizations. Have you ever heard about that? This kind of ideas? Did you cooperate on it as a kid, perhaps? No one? Okay. But I think it's a good idea to have this more recent or perhaps more structural. Can you think about that? And of course, not all over the city, but specific places where a lot of kids are. Could be doable. Nick, you'd like to add something, or do you have a question? I have an online question from okay. Karl Reiter, he's from Austria. Okay. And he asked a question, like he knows a really good example in Freiburg. There's more than 180 home zones, so kids can play on the streets near their homes. Why, don't marry, why do not marry cities follow this example? Yeah. So create an area in a city that is really destined for kids to be able to play safe. Yeah, I um, guess he means Cobain. Yeah. I'm sure about that. Okay. To be honest. You also know the answer to this question? No, I don't have the answer, but I do know some answers, of course. Because this is uh this is planning, by the way. This is a neighborhood in Freiburg, that's why I noticed this. It's called Vauban. It's a former military area, and they redesigned the city, redesigned the city car free. That means that the cars are outside and are less. Uh, overwhelming. You can of course reach the, each house by car, but if you park your car there and then it's strictly forbidden. And everybody knows, oh, it's illegal here. So it's not attractive to park your car in front of your house, though it's possible. And they have all kinds of agreements uh, and all kinds of values added to this area to show the residents that it's a cool area. That's a child-friendly neighborhood where the profits are there for the kids. So it's safe to play there because there's no cars. It's easy to play there. You can connect all kinds of neighborhoods. On a neighborhood level, it's done. So this is even more than a neighborhood, a district, I could say. And it's one of, I wrote a book about concepts for 
Child Friendly Cities, and this is one of the examples in this book. I could add a link somewhere. Uh, this is one of the examples of a concept on district level where you can improve the design. Through design, you can improve and realize child friendly cities. So, a good example. And why is, is it not copied? Because you, planners, need to be strict and strong. And you have to fight against retailers, for example, that tell you that these child friendly cities are not that economically interesting. And you have to find politics, politicians, and uh, uh, well, uh, tell them that it's really important for kids to be bad. So it, there's, a, there's a battle needed to organize this. You can't do it on your own as a planner if you really think that car-free planning is easy. No, it isn't. In, in Germany, there's not that many examples, as I know. In France, there's not, not that many. In all the participants uh, cooperating in this project, there's not that much examples, that many examples of the child-friendly cities as meant in Vauban. And it's really hard politically, economically, uh, it's really hard to have uh, project developers in your project and to convince them that this is really good. So it's a process and this process needs time. And nowadays I really, I see at, in, in average the Europe that the interest for this kind of planning is growing. So you might, as planners might be involved in, in this kind of area. And then stick to the concept, stick to the plan, keep on going, it is possible. So that would be my answer. Uh, we also have one very small question, and that's for you, like... Small answer? Okay, I guess... Slot. I guess Your ideal school question. zone. Your Sorry. ideal school zone. How would you imagine it? What could be, like, a key factor? For school zone? Yeah, for school zone. Kick the cars out. Kick, Kick the cars parents out. out, and it's safe. That's the easy answer. So, now, of course, and there again, you have to deal with the, 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 the neighborhood, you have to deal with, with the police, you have to deal with the parents, and that makes it hard to have real safe school zones. But in fact the main the, the main goal is to have to, to organize a real safe school zone is well to just take out all the cars that shouldn't be that is possible structural but it's, it's all, all also possible just for an hour rush hour or something so you can do it but it takes cars okay uh, thank you there are some more questions online that I will answer after this webinar but due to the time we need to uh, have to work towards a closure and the other questions that are still there I will answer after the webinar so please continue I'm almost almost done so no one back one back can you put this little things bit to the side yeah I try <laughs> so it's, it's mainly about again this message if we want to make child-friendly cities then it's not only about the hardware yeah. It's not only about standardization, it's not only about software, it's a combination again. Again, sticking to this Vauban, for example, then you need the organization, you need to cooperate with all kinds of partners, even public transport and the playgrounds and all kinds of residents and all kinds of uh, retailers in this area. So the organization is important. You need the networks and of course, all kinds of elements you need to stick together, make a kind of a puzzle, and by organizing hardware, orca, and software, can making the networks, making it organizing, and organize it, and making it in kind of a campaign that you explain to people why and how that it works. And if you combine all those elements, then you have a child-friendly city, which was the main question for this metamorphosis. So, talking about this was the framework. I was talking about if you'd like to read something, then go here. And I'll add this book about, but that, that's too much. No, it's not edible. Okay. As you might see, there's a kind of a survey done on this. And the last, the, the last one is to tell you a bit more about all kind of links and that kind of stuff. And the, last, the very last one is to thank Nick about this beautiful grass. Indeed, great, great job for that. Okay, big, big hand for Nick. In the camera. <laughs> Good luck uh, in Europe uh, with all this, uh, those child-friendly cities. Don't think it's a piece of cake. It's not that easy, but stick to the idea, stick the, to the concept, and use the hardware or the software concept and a metamorphosis co concept on all the levels, and it's 
doable. Good luck. Also, thank you for an online audience. I will answer the questions that you will still have in the chat box. I will, however, put my audio on mute and the camera, I will lock it down and the class can continue. We have a lot of eager students who want to continue after courses. So thank you again for participating and we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you.